All right, so quite frankly, I'm a little bit disappointed with uh, how that video turned out for the last micro, so I'm going to do a little bit of work on this one. Um, full disclosure, I just actually have had an hour to kill, and I thought that video would take a little bit longer than it did. Uh, I already ended up taking that micro apart, and, uh, well, it was proving stubborn uh, when it comes to cleaning, so I had to took it apart so that I can stick the whole darn thing in uh, some soapy water and scrub it down and let me say it cleaned up nice cleaned up very nice I'm just waiting for it to dry before I put it back together uh, but this one uh, of course is that same micro that I've had for quite a while now um, been working on still looking for a uh, battery cover by the way um, this thing does work perfectly fine most of the time, but the battery life doesn't seem to reflect what the low power battery indicator seems to, well, indicate. Um, what I mean by that is I think this thing needs the power switch to be cleaned. And I think, since I've never done that, it could be a cool project. <clears throat> so once you take off those four little black tri-point screws and then the two big ones in the battery compartment, this rear pops off. And then we have two Phillips screws that need to pop off in the inside, one by each shoulder button. Oop, I'm sorry, three Phillips screws, one by each shoulder button, then one down by the power switch. Missed that one. And then, power switch falls out, or shoulder button falls out. You have to undo a latch over here, and then this whole thing should lift off. Be careful you don't lose your volume rocker. side and I probably should have removed the faceplate first I wasn't really thinking the right side I don't need the tool to do it now okay then this front panel comes off careful of your power switch your start and select those are gonna come off too if I don't take them off now I'm gonna lose them And then, you can remove the screen if you want, or you can just kind of maneuver it through here. But I'm going to remove it because I'm going to do some soldering. And now, three screws left. Phillips, these ones are short ones. One. Oops, I'm sorry, one more after these three. On the other side of the, uh, by the volume rocker, four. And this metal piece should come out. And then you can remove the front frame. Be careful because your start and select buttons are stuck in there. And if you break this, you're gonna you're gonna have a really bad time. All right. So on normal consoles, oops, this thing's gonna come off your speaker. But I had to solder it down to this one because this one was missing a speaker. But that's besides the point. What we want to do right now, we want to clean this power switch, or kill this micro trying. Well, I definitely don't want to kill the micro. You know what I'm trying to say. I hope. I should have turned the soldering iron on beforehand. Just clean up these pads because this cotton swab is still wet. Okay. I need...
I'm going to switch that to the on position so that I have room to stick my knife in. There we go. This will just give me some leverage. Zoom in a little so you can see what I'm doing. Turn this up. I have it set pretty low right now. It was at 500, but with this lead free stuff, I think I'm going to have a much better time at 600. That scared the shit out of me. This slipped out of my hand. Okay. Good news and uh, more good news. I only lost one screw. Okay. It looks to be the exact same power switch as a um, Game Boy Advance, I think. So if you really this up and probably pull one from a Game Boy Advance. It might be wise to uh, set this in a holder or something. Of course I won't be able to get my iron in there now. I'm just nervous around this uh, ribbon cable here. Okay. So yeah, this thing is pretty gnarly. Pretty gross. This uh, shielding here does not look directional, so it does not matter, or I hope it does not matter which way you solder it back down. I'm just bending the tabs that I accidentally bent. And, clean this thing. So, my preferred method for cleaning these power switches is um, I'll cut off the end of one of these cardboard cotton swabs. And I'll just use the, uh, the tip here. I'm going to get that nice and saturated in isopropyl alcohol, just so it's a little bit softer. And position that. So you can see all the like uh, buildups and deposits in there. I'm going to run this along. Just try and clean that out. I don't think I got very much isopropyl alcohol on here, because usually this makes a god-awful noise. There we go. Now it's nice and soaked. There we go. That sounds a little bit more uh, familiar. Doesn't seem to be working too well, though. Problem is, this thing is so freaking small, there's no good ways to grab it. Alright, so that's not working too well. I'm going to uh, oof, take this out of here. I don't think that's helping me at all. I'm going to get some baking soda. This uh, 
this is a uh, last resort here. You should not do this just for routine cleaning, but I don't seem to be having any other luck. So what we're going to do, snip the end off so I get a clean bit. I'm going to get a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on here just so it's wet and my baking soda sticks to it. And I'm just going to dip that in the bag of baking soda. And because it's not focusing, you can't really see, but you'll just have to take my word that there's some baking soda on there. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to rub this up and down in that hole. Yes, I realize exactly what I just said. No, I did not say that on purpose. Okay, that looks a hell of a lot better. Let's focus there. All right, so now I'm gonna pause the video real quick just for a second. I'm gonna walk this over to my uh, kitchen and blast this out with contact cleaner because I need to get the rest of this baking soda out of here. I'll be right back. All right, so I think that's good enough. It's still wet though, it needs to dry out. Luckily, contact cleaner flashes off pretty darn quick. So next, I need to clean up the switch here, which is that little itty bitty fucking thing. Finally, I have a use for the other side, the normal part of the cotton swab. And I'm gonna hold it down with my tweezers and I'm pressing down on the little metal part in the middle to make sure that I don't accidentally remove that, uh, break it out of the plastic. And this thing did not look dirty at all, but clean it anyway. Now I'm going to just bend the springs up just a hair. They'll uh, settle back down when you got it assembled. Oh man, I just realized that was completely out of frame. I'm sorry. But I'm just grabbing the two sides and squeezing just a little bit. And it doesn't have to be perfect because they'll settle down once you've got it back in. All right, I'm gonna go over this one more time with some isopropyl. So see the sparkly bits. All right, so to put this back together, me and my shaky hands here. Soldering down one corner at a time. Interestingly enough, I expected that to get super hot with my finger on the back, but it didn't, so that was cool. Okay, one side, last side. I think I was just completely out of frame there. I apologize, but that is now nice and soldered down. And that slides nice, not too easily, thankfully, but easy enough. All right, so I've got to take this thing apart again in just a couple days, because I got some new parts arriving for it, some buttons. But 
I think I should put it back together in the meantime. I think the risk of me losing parts is entirely too great otherwise. Apologize for the excessively shaky hands. I'm uh, putting off lunch to do this video. I usually do these videos after lunch specifically for that reason. Okay. And yeah, I gotta clean this thing. It's kind of gross, so we'll do that next time. All right. If I recall correctly, we need to put this thing in. Don't forget about volume rucker. Speaking of things not to forget about, don't forget about the power switch, the whole reason I took this stupid thing apart in the first place. I also just realized while I'm putting this back together that I'm missing these uh, springs on the L and R buttons. Genuinely didn't even notice. I don't think it makes that big of a difference. Like the only reason I know is because I just literally took apart another micro. And I have actually been playing this thing. Right. Good enough. Oh, I should have put in. Let me put in these two as well. I'm going to put in the big screws that hold the faceplate on. Hopefully I can test this thing before my camera decides we're done. Because I don't want to make this a two-parter. Though in hindsight, I probably should have just put the back on instead. Oh well, too late. So clearly works just fine. Right, this is all the way up. Volume's up. We're gonna start blazing emerald here. 
And usually I'll get the red flashy lights on this thing. I'm not getting that right now, which means I believe my issue is solved. And, uh, you know, just tapping on the button doesn't give me the red flashy lights. So I think we're good to go. That's how you uh, clean a power switch on a micro if, uh, heaven forbid, it comes to that. And uh, everything appears to still work, so I call that a mission success. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.